We start today with the Commanders starting their post-draft transactions. Uh, they start by cutting Chase Rouye, which is something that, frankly, I've thought was going to happen for a long time. Rouye is a guy who is a great story, honestly. like he's a, He's a quintessential classic NFL story, and I don't want that to get lost in this because I feel like when we talk about contracts and salary space and or salary caps and all that kind of stuff, it's very easy to dehumanize people and not appreciate what they did, especially when it gets to the point that Chase Rouye is now where it's uh like he's he's this is the correct move. But Chase sixth round pick, there's a bunch of injuries and some poor play from guys like Spencer Long back in the day. Ultimately Spencer uh leaves and, and goes to New York and, and can, you know, kind of picked his career back up uh with some good years with the Jets, but you know, bounce back and forth. Is he a center? Is he a guard? And, you know, the the only thing we really knew about Chase, uh, I mean, this is back when I was on the beat. He was a young guy. Uh, I, I talked to him for some stories, got some great quotes from him. But he was Josh Allen's center at Wyoming, and that was kind of the fun fact about Chase Rouye. And all of a sudden we look up and it's like, is this dude one of the best centers in the NFL? Okay, maybe not he's one of the best, but, like, he's probably one of the ten best. That's That seems worth something. And sure enough, as Ron Rivera comes in, in early 2020, and they're they're kind of taking inventory and moving some things around, shaking some things here, wiggling some things there, and they realize that Chase Rouye is a really important piece for them, and they give him the big, gigantic extension. And that was the right move. Lock up a guy who's good for you, great for the room. Um, you don't have to worry about in any kind of way. He's going to be prepared. He's going to be studied up, which at the center position is essential. Um, he's capable of not just like being a good blocker, but in, in the system they were running, it was a very center-based system in terms of protections and things, and he was going to nail that stuff. He was super smart, great communicator. And unfortunately, he just got hurt. Like it, It's just the way it is sometimes in the NFL where you have guys that get banged up and you know one and, and, and it happens far less now thankfully due to sports science and, and medicine advances and all those things where you don't have guys that have career ending injuries very often especially in their mid to late 20s but by the time Rouye is you know 28 years old he has this really devastating lower leg injury battles like hell to get back and then next and the next year which was last year he has a pretty significant injury again and at that point even if you can get back, like it to what level you lose, you know, if you're not a guy that's a Jason Kelsey, who's like an athletic freak for the position, you know, if, if you're not, um, you know, Trent Williams and, you know, you can afford to lose a little athleticism as you get older or something like that. If you're just a really solid, good football player, can you afford to get hurt, come back? lose a little bit here, lose a little bit there, be rusty. And, you know, the, the, and also like, is it something you really want to do? And it does sound like Chase put in a legitimate effort. I think he's been rehabbing, but everything that I've heard all off season is there were serious doubts in the building that he was going to get back. And ultimately after they draft Ricky Stromberg a week ago tonight, they, they pull the plug, they make the move. They've got Nick Gates. They've got Tyler Larson as a backup. They've got, um, you know, Schaumburg now as the likely starter, him or Gates. And there's just no room for Chase on the roster. There's no real point in putting him through camp. At this point, it's the nice thing to do to cut bait with him, let him go. And if he wants to try to compete on another team, let him do that because they are ready to move on here. And it's also a fair, like, as, as hard as Chase has worked, as good of a guy as he's been, as great of a, a teammate and all that kind of stuff, this is the right decision for the franchise. Um, you, you, one thing Ron was specific about was getting younger at the position because the injuries to Rouye, the injuries to Larson, and in theory, younger guys are going to be more resilient. And now they've gotten that. While Larson's still here a year older, it's a little different when you're the fourth guy or the third guy uh, in Larson's case than you are the first or second guy. Gates, while he's had injuries in the past, is is younger at 27 and is finally like, turn the corner from a health perspective uh, last year. And then obviously Schaumburg coming out as a rookie at 23 or 22 years old, you'd hope is going to be resilient enough to stand up, you know, to a 17 game NFL schedule. 
that and the financials of this made this a no-brainer. So, hey, Chase, thanks. Uh, We look forward to you coming back for alumni events in the future, but it's time for you to go and find something else to do or retire, uh, sit on your money because you earned it, and uh, enjoy whatever's the next phase of your life. As for what this does for the team now, this is why, like, even yesterday, like, I know Russell did a long time of it. We had Chris on the show in the 6 o'clock hour to discuss the Kendall Fuller stuff. Like, the Kendall's, the Kendall conversation is admittedly sexier for the sheer fact that he's a guy that I think has a future. Like, it's a hotter topic. It's a hotter debate because Kendall Fuller's still a good football player. Like, he's still definitely a football player. Again, there's a chance Chase Rouye just retires. Um, I don't know that that's going to happen. There's a chance, great chance he doesn't. But, you know, it's a hotter button issue what they do with Fuller. But realistically, like, they didn't need to cut Kendall Fuller because this move was always coming in some form or fashion. Now, uh, to, to dot the I's and cross the T's here, uh, he is a post-June 1st designation cut. What that does is allow you to split the remaining dead cap money between the, the rest of the years on the contract. So this, uh, instead of just taking the, the entire cap hit this year, where you save $4 million by cutting Rouye as a pre-June 1 designation, and it still costs you $8 million in dead cap, they're able to prorate it until next year, post-June 1st, they save $8 million on the cap this year and will have roughly $4 million dead cap money, not just this year, but next year as well. So that's how the, the June 1st stuff works. What this does immediately by cutting him in that post-June 1st designation means that they have about $11 million in cap space, which means they have room to sign their, their draft picks and then some. Not a lot. They don't have enough probably. Well, it depends on what the first year of an extension looks like for Cam Curl. I would think that there's probably another move or two coming before they would have the space they want to be able to do that. Because the other thing, too, is you want to enter the season with about $5 million in cap space. And if you just sign your draft class, if you got 11, your draft class is typically about 5 to 6. Well, there's your $5 million. You don't. You, you're now like in the position you want to be going into training camp when you're going to have to sign some other guys, where you have some space to sign, you know, if someone else does what the commanders just did to Chase, you know, and what the commanders were able to do with Charles Leno a couple years ago after the Bears cut him. Like, who the, the post-draft cuts are coming. You now have space to potentially get into that market. By the way, part of that market last year was Andrew Norwell, Trey Turner. Uh, I think more specifically Turner. Um, but Norwell is going to be a part of it this year. He's probably also getting cut maybe by the end of the day. Who knows? Might, might be uh, in, in a couple of weeks after some OTA sessions. They see how Chris Paul and Sadiq Charles are doing at that left guard spot uh, where they know Norwell is the floor. I don't really like that as the floor. It's lower floor than I want it to be. But they can also see what else is out there. So ultimately, that's where the, the commanders stand. Um, and that's kind of technocratic in a lot of ways. Um, but they save $8 million on the cap this year. They're in a good space moving forward. They have the ability to make more moves, and they still don't have to cut a guy who could start for them in Kendall Fuller. So what is next for the commanders now? Where, what positions are they actually set at? Which positions do they need to add? Because there also is one other move they need to make that they haven't yet that I'm pretty surprised about. We'll discuss that before Clinton Yates joins us at 4.30 to talk about Steph Curry and the Warriors bouncing back against the Lakers last night and whether he's got Curry as a top five all-time NBA player. That's to come this hour on the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and always live on the free Odyssey app. All right, so that begs the question. uh, What are the commanders going to do next as they have now got Chase Roulier, uh his his papers said, all right, sir, thank you for your service. It's time to go. We're going to take the $8 million in cap space. Well, I think it's also important to remember, they've already done a lot of stuff, right? They they cut Carson Wentz, uh, which saved them the $28 million. Uh, they saved a, another couple mil uh, with J.D. McKissick. They saved another couple mil with Bobby McCain. And they've replaced a lot of those guys, right? They have their third running back in the draft. 
uh, the kid out of Kentucky. They have uh, another nickel safety hybrid player like McCain was. And, you know, I actually feel bad for Bobby because I think Bobby got a little bit of a bad rap by the end. He did, he had some rough moments for sure last year, but they found a role. Like, he was really important for them at the tail end of last year. They started to turn things around on that defense. Yes, Cam Curl was the most important piece and getting Curl where McCain was, but also Curl or uh, McCain really saved them in the nickel. He played a lot of slot for them, a lot of nickel, and did a very good job in there. And so Quan Martin coming in, replacing him, is is an essential part, obviously, of their success. It, he is basically the Bobby McCain replacement and hopefully a significant upgrade. I'm not telling you that he shouldn't be a significant upgrade, but that is, you know, that's kind of where they've gone now. Now, the question is, who's next, right? One, Andrew Norwell seems obvious. Um, he's basically... <laughs> Every time Ron's asked about left guard, he's like, yeah, Chris Paul, Sadiq Charles, um, you know, Sadiq Charles, Chris Paul, uh, they'll battle it out. We're hoping one of them is taking a big leap and is ready to go. And then and then someone's like, hey, uh, you also got Andrew Norwell. He's like, oh, yeah, he'll be in there. No, he won't. No, he won't. Andrew Norwell will be gone. And... Uh, that's that's another couple million, but it's not a big. It's more of a roster spot and less of a cap situation. But you know, it's it's enough enough cap savings that you know you can sign like your back end draft picks potentially with what you'll save, like a million or two off the cap. The other two big ones, I think, fall into the exact same camp. The they they both save. Actually, let me let me look this up real quick. Anthony, do you happen to uh, do you happen to know the numbers on uh, Fuller? I know is eight. Uh, do you know Logan Thomas's number? Uh, Logan Thomas over the cap. This is always good radio right here. Let's see. Thomas is... Uh, you save 5.1 if you do it pre-June 1st with 3.5 in dead cap. Uh, you save 6.9 this year if you if you cut him and uh he's got very little he's got some prorated bonus but he's got no guaranteed salary so you can and that's by the way for the next two years too so you can you know see if one of these tight ends develops this year and then then next year move on for the same exact thing you got 1.75 in dead money each of the next two years you designate him as a post-june cut you save 6.92 million and with both him and fuller where the numbers are actually a little bit even steeper with kendall I just don't get the rush to do it. And we talked about this extensively in the 6 o'clock hour with Russell yesterday. Like, everyone's whining about tight end. Oh, they didn't draft a tight end. How could they not have drafted a tight end? These young guys haven't done anything. They didn't do anything last year. Thomas didn't, you know, he was hurt. It's like, well, hold on. One of those things is not like the other. One of those things is guy got hurt didn't perform as well when he got back, still looked hurt, and by the end of the year, athletically looked less hurt. And, oh, by the way, played with a quarterback in Taylor Heineke who doesn't really throw to tight ends a lot. That Like, when, when Logan got back, Taylor was in there. Taylor likes taking his shots to the outside. What are we talking about? Um, I mean, he throws, throws, threw it over the middle some more. Than, I mean, Carson also was a disaster over the middle. But that's a different story. Anyway, point is, uh, that was not that was not Logan Thomas's prime to success. And Eric Bieniemy has obviously commandeered an offense the last couple of years with the best tight end in the sport, and Travis Kelsey, who he's found ways to get matchup after matchup after matchup for. But you'd have to think he can probably also get Logan Thomas open. With the amount of tension that uh that Travis Kelsey gets, if he can scheme him open, what's up for Logan Thomas? What's up for Armani Rogers? What's up for these other guys? But especially Thomas, who's been there, done that, has some savvy, has some know-how, and is finally fully healthy. But that's kind of the other point, too, is like on the the young guys front, if he can get Armani Rogers open in space, if the enemy can, and Howell can hit him with the regular or let's call it 75% of the regularity that that Mahomes hits uh, Kelsey with. You've seen Armani Rodgers run with the football? That's Anthony, would you sign up for Armani Rodgers getting five catches in wide open space every game? Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. 
The way that dude moves, hell yeah. Get him the ball, get in space. See you. Take off. And if it's not him, Curtis Hodges, Cole Turner, like one of these guys has got, you only need one. That's the thing about the tight end position. Thomas is kind of in his own bucket. John Bates is in his own bucket. They're hopefully tight end one, tight end two. Or at least Bates is locked into tight end two. And then of the other three guys at a position in the NFL where you are looking for traits, that is what you want. You want traits, guys. You want big guys, fast guys, strong guys. You've got three dudes who are all big, fast, and strong. Different varieties of of the three. Turner and Hodges are freaking huge. They've got the big one down. And, you know, strong enough. Rodgers is blazing fast for his size and is also a big freaking dude. You, you get one of those guys to be good under Eric Bieniemy's tutelage, your tight end room's set. And so if you get two of them to pop, that's when Thomas becomes interesting. That's when maybe you could trade him for a fifth or sixth or seventh round pick at, at the end of training camp. If he had a good camp, but you, you want the young guys and someone else is looking for a veteran tight end. That's where you can just move on if you want to and save the cap space for the rest of the year because he does have a non-guaranteed contract. When you cut him, that's it. That's the end. You save the rest of the money on the year. So let's say there is someone who comes available or you've got a position of need, someone gets hurt late in camp, you really like the tight ends, someone else gets cut from another camp, you need a little bit of extra space, you could cut Logan Thomas then. And the same thing is true for Kendall Fuller. If these young guys pop, If they're great and you don't really have space for them, okay. But you can treat it like a true, and this, this, I guess is the, I don't know why I haven't used this phrasing before Anthony, but this is how I'll phrase it. It, You can afford this to be a true meritocracy. May the best man based off the football win. And for obviously your rookies, like you're not cutting those guys, but it really is about who's the best tight end, who are the best corners. And if, Logan Thomas and Kendall Fuller are at the top of that list. You should keep them. You don't need the space. And if not, take the space, roll that that salary into next year, that cap space into next year, and then you can hopefully make some some splashes, whether it's re-signing your own guys or moving forward with with some new ones. All right. Uh, When we come back, Lakers, yikes, last night. Clay Thompson, a classic. And a topic that we've been kind of teasing all week because initially Clinton Yates was going to join us on Tuesday. Does Clinton Yates have Steph Curry as a top five all-time NBA player? We'll talk game. We'll talk history with Yates next on the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and always live on the free Odyssey app. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.